YouTube, it is of course your favorite game here above Average Cody. Coming at you with a video today once again about GAs or gentlemen's agreements um, in pro play for not just Halo Infinite, but really any game. And I really want to dive into why pros even decide to make GAs or gentlemen's agreements. And before we even dive into that topic, uh, if you guys missed my other video and you don't already know what a GA is, GA stands for gentlemen's agreement. And it's basically when pros in the highest level of an esport basically get together and, do so and decide to have something in the game that they are not going to use anymore. Perfect example is the energy sword in Halo. Recently, all the pro teams decided that they are not going to pick up the sword and use it anymore in the game. Now, how is this different from like the league itself banning something versus what a GA is? Um, a GA basically applies when it is still in the game and the pros uh, basically aren't going to wait for it to be officially banned or removed from play because a lot of times we see this with the CDL and Call of Duty and even Halo Infinite currently, uh, it will not actually be removed. So a GA comes in when it's still spawning on the map, it's still in the game, and everybody basically just got together and said, hey, we're not going to be using this anymore. Um, so again, that is what just recently happened with the Energy Sword on Halo Infinite. So it'll be on the map, it's spawning, it tells you it spawns, but pros are not playing for it, they are not not picking it up they're literally just pretending like it's not on the map at all now the real topic i want to dive into is why do these gas happen because obviously the items in the game it was meant to be in the game and in the case like the energy sword guys pros have been playing with it for months and months and months now so why are they just now GAing it well the initial reason that a ga or a gentleman's agreement even comes to is because the pros feel like it is unfair or unbalanced because the whole idea of competitive play is that there is a fair landscape for teams to kind of use. So say FaZe finds something really amazing and it works really good, that's fine because in every competitive setting, Optic can come over and use the same thing and now you have two people using the same thing That's really good And then that's what truly decides true skill when the same amount of weapons or how you play around the weapons Example is in Halo Infinite how you pick up a weapon get it into your hands or even play against it is really what makes um, Pro play interesting. It's what makes it complex and it's what makes it competitive However, sometimes there is a gun that sneaks in that is very unfair. Um, it's very overpowered. Uh, we see it in Call of Duty. It could be an attachment for a gun. It could be a gun altogether because basically what makes something unfair is when it is so good that it has to be used. Um, and I think that's kind of where they're at with the energy sword because the energy sword is a easy one hit swing it's very easy to use and you can pair it with items around the map that make it very 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 good and these are things that you are usually uh traits for a weapon or an item that gets ga'd from pro play so it has to be something that is so good that like using it instantly gives you an advantage but it gets more complex than just like a power weapon or something um say in call of duty uh, a gun is really good and it's so good that you feel like you can't win unless you are using that gun That is usually the kind of characteristic that gets something removed in most cases Now there's another reason that things sometimes get GA'd and this very much applies to what I think is going on in Halo Infinite um, I first actually heard this from I believe Snakebite did a YouTube video on it uh, Don't quote me on that, but I believe it was him um, basically when you play with something for so long and there's not really any updates to it, there's not any balancing changes, and there's just overall not really any adjustments at all to either the way something works, how much damage it does, um, it can start to feel unfair. And I do believe that is what is going on with the energy sword right now. Is the energy sword a very good weapon? but also a staple of Halo, and I mean, it's got limited ammo, uh, your movement speed is only so good with it, uh, but I mean, it does have good lunge and things like that, but we're not going to get into the Energy Sword GA as a whole, I'm just using it as an example on why it was GA'd, but Snakebite basically said that since 343 hasn't done anything to kind of balance it or adjust any of the concerns that the pros may have had, 
um, it gets kind of stale and it starts to feel unfair. And when things start to feel unfair, guys, instead of just sitting around waiting with it and dealing with it, um, things can get GA'd. And I think that's kind of what happened to the energy sword is basically everybody was sitting there um, going two man down, three man down to the energy sword. And it was just getting frustrating. It was making the game feel slightly unfair for the team that does not have the energy sword. And they basically said, uh, let's just do away with it all together. Um, another example from Halo Infinite, guys, is the Mangler. Now, the Mangler, a lot of the pros felt like it was unfair right off the rip. The one shot to the melee made it feel like a shotgun, which obviously there is a shotgun, but there is a situation with the shotgun where you have to hit a certain amount of the bullets to get that one hit melee, so you don't always get it. But with the Mangler, if you so much as tap them in the leg and melee them, guys, it was killing. It was crazy, and basically they were begging for adjustments, begging for adjustments, and then the pros ended up GAing it, and they basically said, we're just not going to grab it off the wall. They have since adjusted it uh, to a two-shot to the melee, but the pros, I believe, still have a G8, so that gun's just out altogether. Um, but basically, the amount of updates 343 has put in and the amount of weapon adjustments they've done, I think, kind of caters to the amount of GAs going on in Halo Infinite. But hopefully, this kind of made sense on what brings up a GA and why the pros even choose to do it. Um, it is basically... A lack of interference from the developers or even from the league as a whole. But I mean, I kind of understand it because the league can't just step in and just remove something uh, the moment somebody spouts off saying it's unfair because that can kind of lead to uh, no weapons or a very limited amount of weapons in the game and that can kind of become boring. But as the pros get fed up, the pros get frustrated um, or kind of just annoyed. Uh, I do understand GAing things, especially when they are truly unfair fair uh back to the call of duty example a lot of guns uh frankly 90 percent of the guns do not make it into competitive uh because they are just ga'd out immediately because pros are like okay this is crazy and it has n it's not balanced at all and it's a beam at long range we're just going to ga it so nobody even gets to touch it and then you don't really have to waste time getting used to it and moving it into the meta because then you're practicing with guns and practicing with a gun that eventually gets GA'd can be very frustrating because you just put all this time into learning something um, and then it just gets removed altogether. So that's kind of why GAs tend to come in because, again, they do uh, activate faster than a developer uh, will remove or ban something, guys. But hopefully this made sense to you. Um, so I guess that's kind of two main reasons to summarize on why GAs come to be. Uh, basically, something feels overpowered or unfair or um, something has kind of skated through the cracks uh, and it's been in the game so long and it's frustrated people to the point where they feel it is now unfair and that it has to be GA'd or gentlemen's agreemented um, out of pro play guys but again this is strictly for pros again watch my other video if you want a more in-depth on how it can affect regular matchmaking because it really doesn't um, but a lot of people in matchmaking like to follow the GAs especially in ranked modes on Call of Duty Halo Infinite really any rank game guys so feel free check out that other video i'll link it down in the description but that's pretty much it for this video guys i just want to do a quick one uh because in my last video i didn't really explain why gas kind of happen because they do happen very often and they do tend to come up whether you follow pro play in these games we play uh or not guys but that does it please subscribe to the channel halo infinite content guys we're going to be rolling into that modern warfare 2 content we've got the betas rolling out we're going to have the full release we're doing a 24 hour stream so subscribe it's a lot of fun here on the channel guys leave a like on the video it helps out so much leave a comment give me your thoughts on GAs or if I missed something on why things end up getting GA'd uh, because I'm sure there's other like underground reasons that I missed or don't even know about myself uh, and then guys channel memberships super thanks if you feel like support monetarily please don't feel like you have to but it does help out ever so much but thank you guys so so much for watching the video thank you for all the support stay happy stay healthy and stay tuned for the next video